welcome to this video lesson in our series on market failure for IB economics. And in this video what we're going to look at is the what describe what common access resources are, look at examples of common access resources. Uh, we're then going to look at the, the because there's a lack of pricing mechanism for common access resources, that means these can be these goods can be basically overused. You know what I mean? And then with these stocks being depleted. Uh, as a result of other producers and consumers that don't pay for the use of these resources but end up using them and how that affects sustainability. So, and of course I want to explain what sustainability is as well in this context. So what are common access resources? Uh, have a think about that and uh, pause the video, judge on a few ideas, break down what's common access resources and when you're ready press play to continue. So, common access resources are resources that are not owned by anyone, they don't have a price and are available for anyone to use without payment. An example of this would be, say for example, clean air, lakes, rivers, fish in the open seas, wildlife, forests, biodiversity, the ozone layer, the stable global climate, all these wonderful things, okay? So stuff that nobody owns, uh, they don't have a price, anyone can use them and they don't pay for them. They're what we call riverous and non-excludable. Okay, so the opposite of quasi-public goods. If you don't know what they are, uh, remember what we did in the last video. Have a look back at that there now. Okay, so they're riverous and non-excludable. Now, how are they riverous? How do you think common access goods are riverous? Well, if I use the clean air to breathe, then nobody else can use that clean air. Okay, so I've just inhaled that clean air. That's all mine. Ha ha, you can't have it. Um, if fish are caught in the open sea, Others can't catch it. If we damage the ozone layer, then future generations can't benefit from having that ozone layer. Now the question is, how are common access goods non-excludable? Well, it's anyone as common goods don't have a price, anyone can use them without payment, so therefore they're non-excludable. So that's a kind of a bit more straightforward, really. So the characteristics of these goods, either river, uh, they're riverous and they're non-excludable. Uh, make them a serious threat to the environment, leading to degradation and depletion of essential resources. This creates an externality, uh, which makes sense. If, if you think about it, let's look at this example for pollution. When factories, cars, households, when they all emit pollution into the atmosphere, and, or into the rivers, into the lakes, into our oceans, they're overusing a portion of these natural resources without actually paying for them. Okay, uh, so if you think about it, because because they're uh, to go back to that there, because all of these consumable or producers or consumers and producers are using these common access goods, um, which are there, they're natural, but now they're being used um in a negative sense, creating a negative externality for them, and no one's actually having to pay for them. Do you get where, where that's coming from? I don't know why I'm asking you because you can't respond to me, but. There you go. Second example is overfishing, okay? Reduce the fish stocks and it disrupts the whole e marine ecosystem, okay? Uh, another example would be deforestation. So that's, you know, when they're clearing the Amazon rainforest to create agricultural land. This is massive co consequence for biodiversity, wildlife, and the ozone layer as well. So, in terms of what sustainability is, sustainability refers to maintaining the ability of the environment and the economy to produce and satisfy our needs and wants now and into the future. Okay, it depends crucially on preservation of the environment over time. The challenge for all economies is to balance the economic goals with the environmental goals at the same time. There can be the uh, the the, challenge, the question of greed, where people want to constantly boost the economic goals at the expense of the environment. On the flip side, there's people who want to protect the environment at the expense of the economy. The key thing which a, a global the global economy has to do is find the balance. We need to protect our economy and protect our common access resources so that our future generations have a, a planet you know, and a good environment in which we can operate in. Having said that, we economically, we're wearing an eco economist hat, we don't want to go into global recession. We need to keep the economy going and the, uh, and the economic system working as well. It's striking the balance between the two is one of the major challenges we have in the world. So, in this video now, you know what common access resources are and you know examples of common access resources. And you know that because we have no pricing mechanism, you know, you can't charge a price for common access resources because they're not excludable. That means that consumers and uh, producers can overuse and deplete these resources a lot, um, which can have a very negative effect for the environment, creating a negative externality there that poses a massive threat to sustainability. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you have any questions on it, please ask below in the comments. If you enjoyed it, give it a like and uh, want to subscribe to the channel as well. That'd be great. Thank you very much. See you in the next video now. Bye.